This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Well, we've gotten responses from Judge Gull. We've also gotten responses from the Indiana Attorney General about the representation of Richard Allen and about Judge Gull continuing in the case as judge of the Richard Allen murder case, the allegations of him being the man who killed those two little girls in Delphi, Indiana, a few years back. It's been a crazy train ride. No need to really go and reiterate everything that's gone on with it thus far, but it now was in the hands of the Indiana Attorney General to decide where do we go from here since the defense of Richard Allen was dismissed by Judge Gull and the questioning, honestly, just the the fairness of Judge Gull presiding over the case, but the Attorney General has responded and expressed his opposition to a high-profile murder defendant's attempt to remove the special judge from her position in the case, saying the approach was inappropriate. Joining me to discuss, Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent. Thoughts on the response that we got from the Indiana Re- Attorney General on one of their own? I'm hopeful. You know, as we said in talking about this case uh, numerous times already, you know, when, when chaos erupts, you're hoping that the systems and processes put into place are strong to right the ship if it's wrong to, and listing one way or the other. And I'm hopeful that when the attorney general looked at this and made the ruling, that they made a good ruling based on good facts, good evidence, because it is what it is. I mean, they made the ruling and they're not going to go back on it. Now, I do understand not removing Judge Gull from this because mm-hmm. that would set a bad precedent that, hey, if a suspected killer doesn't like the judge, they can have the judge removed. That sets a really bad precedent. Sure. So I get that aspect of it. But there's been so much chaos evolved and I mean, surrounding this case that everything that happens is suspect. But since this did happen at the higher level with oversight, I'm hopeful that it's okay. So let's keep our fingers crossed. I, it is, it's inter- what I found really interesting though is I'd like to hear more about, and, and, and she's made the statements about why she wanted her, his defense removed mm-hmm. because of mishandling. She didn't think she's there, they're representing him well or doing a good job. And if you're looking at the defense they're using, how kind of out of the world it is with, with the, you know, with Odinism, the whole Odinism. Yeah. You're like, all right, I can kind of see that. So it's just a lot of weirdness. <laughs> there is a lot of weirdness there. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're I mean, bad. They have a great track record. The two that have been kicked off of the case, they, they really did have a good track record of mm-hmm. representing their clients and not being, you know, really out there attorneys. But again, I mean, it, it plays more into, are they getting too close to something that they were kicked out? An interesting point that I heard made the other day from defense attorney Bob Mata when he was on the show was he thinks that because Rossi uh, and Baldwin were ready to go and they said, look, we're ready to go here in like 70 days to keep up with the speedy trial requirement. The state didn't really seem to be quite ready at all to be able to do just that. But that's a firm date. That is a hard date. And that is every right to Richard Allen for his right to a speedy trial. He did not waive that. But if the state wasn't ready to do to go, and they don't really, not really prepared to respond to all these allegations of what they were going to be bringing up. Somehow you got to pause this. Somehow you got to punt this down in a way that technically doesn't violate the rights of Richard Allen. Technically, the way this has all gone down doesn't violate the rights of Richard Allen. But in a way, it kind of does. It removes his defense and it gets it now pushed way down because the state was likely not prepared to move forward at this in a timely manner. And again, that goes back on the state and the state that already has a lot of interesting, to say the least, accusations against it uh, for the whole handling of the case in general. That seems plausible. Yeah. Because so out of all the things that we've talked about surrounding this case, Tony, that is actually a plausible reason behind things that we've, mm-hmm. you know, because there's no conspiracy theories there. That is just the bureaucracy of government yeah. at work. Yeah. That out of everything I've heard throughout this case, that's probably the most plausible thing I've heard yet mm-hmm. about why something happened the way it happened. So yeah. who knows? Conjecture. We're not behind the scenes, mm-hmm. but that makes more sense than anything else. 
it'll be very interesting to see exactly uh, where this goes. It should be noted that at the end of the day, the attorney general did say they want everybody to work together to ensure mm -hmm. the pursuit of justice stays on track. I think everybody wants that. Uh, they say it uh, deserves uh, justice, or the, especially the uh, the families of the two girls deserve justice and closure for the heinous, heartbreaking murders uh, in that release. Abby and Libby deserve justice. Uh, it's a matter, or if this matter ever comes, I thought this was interesting, if this matter ever comes to the appellate court system, we will take immediate action and will do in all, as we do in all other cases, to see that the rule of law is upheld. It was also said earlier in the document as well that, look, this should not have been a writ mandamus that was filed. This should have been an appeal that was filed. Almost saying, like, go back to the appeal. But file the appeal. We'll see if that yep. even holds water, though, because they're not the official attorneys of record anymore. And that was part of Gull's argument saying this is null and void because they're not part of the representation of Richard Allen. Yeah, and it's in at the highest level in the state. It's at it's in their best interest to make sure that things get righted here yeah. and that people maintain the confidence in the system mm -hmm. that's in place for justice. Because if not, they're voted out. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it, some of these people are elected positions, attorney generals. Those are elected yeah. positions, I believe. Correct? Yes, in most. I I believe so. In almost anywhere I mean, yeah. every state's and a little if bit not different. they're appointed by someone who is elected yeah. and so all these things have consequences on those and so it really is in the best interest when you start getting at those higher levels of doing the right thing because if a population doesn't feel safe with the organizations and systems in place and have trust in those organizations and systems they're going to vote someone else in that will make them feel safe again yeah. so in order to keep the ship from turning upside down it's in their best interest to make sure that they steady it it's rock solid it's proper it's going according to procedures we're not breaking laws they're, and so it's, they're doing the best they can probably to tamp down all these conspiracy things that are starting to swirl around uh -huh. and, then, and i'll tell you we, we've talked about this numerous times. The defense attorneys that have been involved in the cases that we're talking about, they have been solid on everything. And I've been talking about the, the Murdoch trial, yeah. too. Those two defense attorneys, is like they gained a lot of rep good, uh, solid reputation above what they had. Because just, you know, regardless of what happens to Murdoch, he'll be a ray, he'll die in jail, regardless of whether things get overturned yeah. and he gets a new trial or not. But the fact that they were able to do all they did goes to their credibility. And same thing with the attorneys dealing with the Delphi case. I mean, yeah. their credibility goes up a lot for the amount that they're fighting for their uh, client. Well, I mean, at this point, I mean, I, I'm not going to say it's a get out of jail free card for Richard Allen, but it certainly almost is a get a second trial uh, for free card that he is holding, regardless of how yeah. all of this round settles. I, uh, if he's convicted, almost guaranteed a second trial, without a doubt, by the amount of things that have gone wrong in this treatment. I hope his new defense is strong. But it, I hope they do him a solid because again, we don't know if he's guilty, innocent, whatnot, but you want him, you want them to have a solid, good, fair trial because yeah. again, let's go back to the victim's families. We want to make sure that they feel justice has been served for them and what they're dealing with for the rest of their lives. Yeah. You know, when I sit there going, Oh I, yeah, let's convict somebody, even if they're not the right person. No, you want to find the person who truly killed your kids. All right. And that's the goal at the end of the day. Hopefully, they are able to get there. Want to listen ad-free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.